I've been a fan of string games since first learning the Cat's Cradle two-person game as a child. And that was really pretty much all I did when I was a kid. Um, I knew Cat's Cradle, but I didn't really know any others. And then when I was in college studying anthropology, I came across uh, string games in the anthropological context and became fascinated because they are truly one of the, the very few human cultural universals. Um, just about all people throughout the world play with string. And there are fascinating examples of extremely complicated, difficult to make figures that have been independently invented in widely separated parts of the world where there, there's no way that they would have been transferred. It's that people play in the same kind of way and come up with the most uh, obscure, complicated figures. So that part fascinates me. And then, of course, using that connection as an entree to multicultural education and global awareness. Um, but then what really got me excited about using string games pedagogically in the classroom was when I um, started in a bilingual school teaching um, computer keyboarding and found that native Spanish speakers, not just children, but in fact, many highly educated adults don't know the names for the individual fingers. The, the, if you think about it, you know, you don't say pinky, ring finger, middle finger that often. And in Spanish, they're, they're just words that are not in common use. And um, so in order to teach keyboarding, I needed to give kids that vocabulary. And string games occurred to me as a wonderful way to give kids that vocabulary and also develop some dexterity, which especially my third and fourth graders whom I was teaching then really didn't have. And playing with string is one of those things um, that really develops dexterity in, in uh, a wonderful way. Um, and the other thing I discovered as I started doing string games more and more in the classroom is that it's a wonderful uh, opportunity and, and example of what we've been uh, exploring in the NWP network a lot around connected learning. Because in fact, when, whenever I'm teaching a group of any kind, kids or adults, almost always there's a few people who pick up the figure quicker than others. And so I immediately designate those who have just learned the figure as extra teachers who then get to give a one-on-one -on -one to someone of their choice and by the second session, we're getting close to having half the class as teachers. Mm -hmm. And it establishes that atmosphere of collaborative, cooperative learning where everyone is a teacher. Um, so that's the part that, that really excites me about this. Um, and it's interesting, again, like as with, with so many hands-on activities, the way in which those who excel at this are often not the same kids who excel at the more academic tasks. Mm -hmm. And yet it does provide an entree into just those skills because they have to be communicating about what they've learned. Um, so the communication piece is, is also key and very exciting.